apologize. It's just, it's misinformed and it's wrong. It's never okay to celebrate segregationists. Never. Well, they're all jumping on Biden for his comments, including other 2020 Democrats, and rightfully so. What Biden said was inartful at the very least, but congressional Democrats don't see it that way. They're not only defending Biden, but warning his competitors to back off. I don't think the remarks are offensive. For us to spend time on an issue like this, which is important, but it's not central to what the election is about. As we move towards these debates in Miami next week, Every minute on that debate stage that a, a Democratic candidate is attacking, challenging, or criticizing another Democratic candidate is a good minute for Donald Trump's campaign. Oh, joining me now, Dinesh D'Souza, conservative commentator, filmmaker, and Shane Harris, Democratic strategist, president of the People's Alliance for Justice. All right, Dinesh, are Democrats afraid to have a debate on those two nights next week? debate stage within their own party and exposing any fault lines? Well, I think that uh, Biden is proving to be a, a kind of a radioactive character here. Yeah. And uh, I think what's made this controversy so telling is he has let a, a big cat out of the bag. Uh, the, uh, the cat is the fact that the racist segregationists were all in the Democratic Party. And the left has done a lot of work to try to cover this up, to imply that the racist Democrats all became Republicans. But here's Biden coolly remembering and correctly remembering that, no, they were Democrats. They were great guys as far as he's concerned. He got to work with them. And, in fact, they are models of the kind of way that bipartisan cooperation should move forward. So I don't really blame Kamala Harris and Cory Booker for going, whoa, this is crazy talk, white Men, uh, because it is. Shane, uh, Biden is way up in the polls still. The last Fox News poll, I think it had him about 36 percent. He's smoking the rest of the field, although you've seen some movement for Elizabeth Warren. She takes a lot of passion to the stage. Also, uh, Bernie Sanders still doing pretty well. He's fallen a little bit. Buttigieg, uh, pretty strong. Where's this all going to end up next week? This is going to be a crazy couple days. Look at this. This is just one night. <laughs> Yeah, no, Laura, I mean, uh, I think that it is uh, much like American Idol, but maybe not so much. We're not having a whole lot of uh, singing auditions. But I think that this is very important when you talk about Biden, because we have to remember that Biden right now is the reality is he is the front runner. He is the one with the strongest name recognition in this race. Um, and so the attacks that would come are partially because, yes, uh, maybe those comments were offensive. Yes, they were uh, offensive to many of us. But on the other side of it, uh, many of these candidates who are speaking up and some others who are speaking up within the party is partially because of his name recognition and seeing him as an entitlement candidate. But the reality is that, uh, you know, this is all good. This is all good for the country. This is good well, for the party because yeah, we play. need to have differences. Well, and I we agree. need to I think, debate those differences yeah, out. I couldn't agree more. I think that's a great way of stating it. I want to play what Biden said when he was pressed about, oh, what are you going to do? Cory Booker wants you to apologize. Let's watch. How does it feel that your Democratic rivals are implicitly saying that you have issues talking about race? They know better. Are you going to I apologize? Think, guys, like Cory Booker apologize has called for, for what? Cory Booker has called for it. Of course he should apologize. apologize. He knows better. Oh, Dinesh is like Corey should apologize. Where's this ending next week? Well, We're gonna have like an know. MMA match on the on the stage. Well, you've got a white guy calling on a black guy to apologize for criticizing the white guy's buddy-buddy relationships with segregationist Democrats. So that's where we are right now. See, I think the danger for the Democrats is not so much the so-called circular firing squad in which Democrats kind of criticize each other. It is that all these Democrats up for debate are going to be playing to be the furthest man or woman on the left. I'm but more socialist than you. But I, I, well, I have to disagree with you because the reality is this is that this country does not have a good history when it comes to African Americans, whether Republican or Democrat. So to say, oh, we're going to put it all in one party, yes, historically the Democratic Party was very racist, and there were Dixiecrats, in which we right. called them. But the reality is that the Republican Party and the Democratic Party has been whites, and, and how white America has dealt with black right, America we can't get, we can't and the do history that of this country. Yeah, okay. We saw that in the reparations hearing this week. I think that this so is going to be fascinating. Rate. we got to have you back, both back. We're going to do a whole hour on race in America, but this is a big topic not going away. 
We really appreciate both of your voices tonight. And we're going to see how this plays Thank out you. over two nights. I think Biden's going to.